Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing. As a part of uh, this tutorial, we are continuing ahead with the chapter one that is basics of software testing and looking into the same context that is 1.4, the test process. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be jumping into the last stage of our test process that is test completion. So in our previous tutorial, we tried understanding that how exactly test execution is the phase where you perform all your necessary executions and make sure that every single activity which is planned or maybe something which emerges as a part of the process will also be executed. Now there's another thing which we are talking about called as exit criteria, which need to be met in order to call off our testing phase. Now that's very important to meet the expectations of the exit criteria which determines when you have done all that what you were supposed to do. Now exit criteria will contain a list of all that action items or certain specific measures which confirms that this is the time you can stop testing. Now of course you have planned initially during the test planning to determine that what should be tested and how long, what kind of effort would be required and so on. Now exit criteria will have something similar to that which determines that when is your deadline, what are the thoroughness measures like the measure of the coverage or what kind of defect rate or defect open rate should you have or if there's anything which is pending to be done like what should be the execution coverage, what should be the requirement coverage be achieved and what kind of specific non-functional parameters to be mentioned should be achieved as a part of the exit criteria. Once we achieve the exit criteria, we move into the next phase, which is the test completion. That means that's where you stop testing and you hand over the product to the business, that is the customer. And that's where you step into some of your internal final phases activities that is called as test completion check. Now in this particular phase, you generally sit down and discuss with your teammates and see that what is pending to be done or moreover, gather the lessons related to what we have learned during this particular project. So this is more of like a function being organized and conducted. Now the function is over and you're trying to understand that what things could have been better, what is that we could not do as a part of it, and what are the different action items pending on us to be completed post completion of all the execution. Now the first point here is telling you clearly that we are talking about all that defects which are closed and entering to change requests for the product backlog items for any defects that remain unresolved. So there might be a possibility that there were a few defects which you could not close during the regular release, but due to the deferment or any other reason, we'll be talking about all that in a short while in our upcoming tutorials. So there would be a lot of defects which you could not fix as a part of the life cycle and that's where you create a proper documentation that hey these are the list of all that defects which you are yet to fix it might be due to uh, the kind of you know interaction what you had with the exercises that you didn't have the clarity and the development team said that maybe you know we cannot fix this right now but yeah once we have more picture more detailed understanding of it we can certainly do that now that's the where that's the point where you decide that hey we might not be fixing this defects right here in this particular release, but we have to document the target version. When are you planning to fix them, right? So you can always push them as an update or upgrade to a particular system. Also to understand that what kind of, you know, uh, summary of the report, like overall summary, what you have performed in the testing. So we create a report called as test summary report, which certainly has all that information throughout your testing life cycle, what was organized and conducted. Right from the test plan, the number of test cases you executed, number of test cases which resulted into great defects, what happened to those defects, classification of those defects, what kind of approach did you use, how this approach helped you to achieve the quality, if you had risk involved in your projects, how did you mitigate them, if there are any risks which are not mitigated, what are the residual risks, will they have any kind of adverse effect on the product, at any point of time, right? So you try to document everything regarding the whole process which you did as a part of the testing life cycle and certainly populate that as something called as test summary report. Now a test manager here is responsible for doing this reporting or creating the test summary report. 
Now finalizing and archiving the test environment, the test data, infrastructure and the testware for later use. Which clearly says that whatever you have used in this project might be referable or can be referred for any other projects too or maybe the future aspects of the same project or not even that then the maintenance team which is responsible for releasing updates upgrades and doing the migration of the product from one platform to another platform is also something which is really crucial with the, where they need all these information again being you as a test engineer for a project may not be working on the maintenance part at the same time so you will be getting involved with a new project on the other hand, our maintenance testing team will take care of the project thereafter. And they will be responsible for making sure that all the remaining uh, pending items or maybe new requirements will all be uh, implemented. And they will be doing a lot of regression tests to make sure that these environments work fine. Now this is where the archiving of the old details is very necessary and must. Handing over this testware to the maintenance team is again a part of this particular phase. So it's more of like all that pending things what you were supposed to do post completion of the handover will be done here as a part of the test completion phase. Also, you conduct a retrospective session where you sit together with the team member internally within the testing team and try to gather that what exactly happened during the life cycle, where there are few ideas which, will, which can help us to improvise or were there a few things which you think we could have, you know, stopped doing, right? There are practices which might be followed and they are no longer useful for us or they does not result into any kind of benefits being added to the process. Also, there could be few things which you want to highlight that, hey, these are the common mistakes which we performed and if we could have avoided these things, we could have done better, right? So you generally try to answer questions like, what we should start doing, what we should continue doing as a good practice, and what we should stop doing as a bad practice, and collecting all this information to gather and define that what is the area, what are the possible areas where we need improvement and having a plan established for that. And that's where your process can further mature. Like you can improvise your own mistakes or improvise on the way you work and add more value to your existing process making it more mature from time to time. So test completion phase is more of like, you know, doing all those activities which you could not do. There are certain activities which especially happens at this point of time, once the system is being accepted by the business, and then you have some internal activities to proceed with and make sure that they're all completed before you can say, I can sign off with my testing process altogether. So that was to talk about the test completion phase of the test process. With this, we also come to an end of the test process and we'll now be trying to understand a bit on the psychological aspect of what exactly testing is all about. And then we'll have something more to deep dive into. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.